How's it going, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. And as I'm sure most of you are aware, I'm an iPhone user. I have been for a good few years now. However, last year, I did take a look at the Google Pixel line. So today, I thought it'd be fun to try out the latest and greatest from Google, namely the Pixel 7 Pro. But not in the way you might expect. See, I've reviewed Pixels. I know how they work. But I want to see how well I'd adjust as a primary iPhone user to using a Pixel 7 Pro as my daily driver. So we're going to do some day-to-day -day tasks with this Google Pixel 7 Pro. So today we're going to be putting this away and replacing it with, well, this. So after I'm done burying this in my garden, let's go test this thing out. So the first thing we're going to be testing out is Google Assistant. Now, I use Siri quite a lot, mainly for just basic tasks like setting timers or playing music. And I was initially going to test this by making a cup of coffee. But Lee, who is currently behind the camera, bought a box of Monster. However, who wants to do warm Monster? So let's go to the fridge. Set a timer for 10 minutes. I mean, it worked. There it is. Okay, Google seemed to have no problems with that. But I want to try something a little bit more difficult. Time to see if Google can look up some obscure ass music. Play Drug Lord by William Bonney. Good vibes version. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no. I was wrong. It's the good vibes version. Like, honestly, that's like 99% of what I use Siri for. So realistically, yeah, I'm impressed. Stop. That's not bad, actually. Fair enough. Anyway, now it's delicious energy juice time. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be trying is taking notes. So according to the pixel aficionados in my life, certain pixels can actually transcribe audio from the audio recorder into actual text. And seeing as audio transcription is actually something that I do very regularly, like almost all of my videos have some element of that. It just makes scripting so much faster. It also helps me write things that I would organically say. So yeah, I'm interested in seeing how how well this works. In fact, I've been doing it this whole time. Let's see how it worked. Oh, damn. It actually did it. Has it? Yo, that's awesome. Check that out. I'll hold my hands up. That's kind of cool. Apparently, there's also another update in the pipeline where it will be able to identify separate speakers. Still, though, that is really cool. While we're here, we might as well check out some social media. Now, the Twitter experience was one of the initial reasons, as silly as it is, that pulled me over to the iPhone side of things back in 2019. Like, realistically, Everybody was talking about Twitter for Android. I was on Twitter for Android. I was very curious to see if the experience was better on iOS. It was. That wasn't the main reason though. Don't get it twisted. That said though, let's try out some Twitter. Okay, I've pulled up my account on Twitter. I gotta say, I do like the swipe gestures. Honestly, it's cool. That said though, the look and feel doesn't feel as good as it does on iOS, in my opinion. Like obviously a lot of this is subjective. And for me, Twitter at least just isn't as good. I gotta say, I love the automatic theming. Okay, YouTube seems to be relatively the same as it is on iOS. Interface seems to be almost exactly the same. Like the look and feel, again, basically the same as on iOS. Yeah, honestly, social media on the pixel, pretty good. Okay, so for this next section, we're gonna go somewhere. So, uh, we'll need directions. We won't need directions, but set directions to <laughs> Not gonna show you this well for obvious reasons, but it seems to have worked well. In my opinion, Google Maps is superior to Apple Maps anyway, so not really losing anything here. Uh, yeah. Let's head off. Now, I've been coming to this town for like, I think over 10 years now. It is the perfect place for photography. I think people come from like all over the country to take photos here. Uh, and it's lucky that I don't live too far away. Okay, so next up, we're gonna be testing Google Pay. Now, obviously I am more used to Apple Pay, but I have used Google Pay before. I remember not being a big fan of it back in the day. So I'm interested to see how it's changed. This flapjack is now mine. Um, so thoughts on Google Pay? So you do have to have your phone unlocked to use it. However, you don't need to do an immediate biometrics authentication. So in my mind, it doesn't seem quite as secure as Apple Pay, but uh, the experience was like using a contactless car. Not bad. And now uh, we have a cappuccino flapjack that I bought for my cameraman. Okay, so we're here. That didn't take too long, did it? So could take some photos. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to test the ultra wide. Seeing as I'm pretty sure on the 7 Pro, the ultra wide did get an upgrade from like 0.7 to 0.5. So it is going to be a little bit wider. Let's check it out. This is what we're going to be getting.
Okay, so something I immediately like about the Google Pixel coming from an iPhone is how the essentials are very much there. Like, as on iPhone, you can quickly change your focal lengths. But another feature I like is that you can actually manually adjust your white balance. So seeing as we are currently in the snow, I might want to cool it down to really add to that effect. This seems that on the Google Pixel, not only do you get a temperature slider to make it either cooler or warmer, but you also get your exposure slider. Again, nothing really new there. But something I really like, straight in the UI, contrast adjustment. Now, this really isn't a feature on iPhone. And of course, I'm sure most people will just use it as a point and shoot. But it is really nice to know these features are there. Okay, let's go take some more photos. Okay, so the next angle we're going to test is the two times zoom, namely down this street. The two times zoom is really one of my favorite focal lengths. Like when Apple added it back on the iPhone 14 Pro, I was genuinely thrilled because oh, it's just such a nice angle for some street photography. So that's what I thought we'd do. <laughs> So another thing I really like about taking photos on the Google Pixel is the automatic leveler. Like having a level shot is such an easy way to make your photos look better. It's the little things like that that take your photos from looking eh to seriously good. And having that built in on the Google Pixel is a really cool feature. It is cold. It's cold. December was not the time to film this video. Okay, so we've just noticed a load of like frost and moss on this one tree. And I thought we'd try out the macro mode. Personally, I love macro photography. So yeah, let's see if we can get a cool shot. And this is what we came for. It'd be such a cool shot. Okay, running out of battery, so we gotta get this quick. That's gonna look so good if we pull that off. Okay, I know I said I think like the moss shot's gonna be my favorite. I didn't even see that coming. The, the waterfall is probably deafening. We might uh, go a little bit further, try to get a couple more shots, but it's getting very cold. My camera battery's almost dead. This is what we were getting a shot of, that reflection. Okay, my camera battery's about to die now and we have more things to do. So we're gonna head home, make lunch, and then try some other things that I might use my phone for. So far though, I gotta say, Google's latest and greatest, lot of fun. I have been thoroughly enjoying using this phone so far. And while I'm certainly not as comfortable using it as I would something like my iPhone, battery died. <laughs> All I was saying though is, yeah, very much enjoying the camera on the Pixel. Seriously, this thing's awesome. Photo shoot was so cold. Next up, something that I do, and I'm sure almost everybody does every single day is listen to music. Now for me, I recently switched to Spotify on iOS. So honestly, I don't think it'll be that much of a difference. That said though, Let's give it a go. Again, let's try a Google Assistant. Hey Google, play How Do You Know It's Not Armadillo Shells. Something I am interested in seeing is how well the Pixel copes at high volume, specifically full volume. Often phones can get a little bit distorted at full volume, although that is less of an issue in recent years. Honestly, I think they sound pretty good for phone speakers, like they get decently loud, like they have fine bass, certainly for phone speakers. But as I said, the mid-range just isn't quite there. As for distortion, well, I haven't really noticed much of that either. And yeah, honestly, not bad. All right, so the last thing I want to do in terms of testing this phone is I need to transfer those photos we took from the Pixel 7 Pro to my computer. Because oh, some of those photos just turned out so nice. Gotta edit them. Now, usually I would use AirDrop for this. When you do all data included, you do get a lossless file. And in my opinion, at least, that is a really cool feature. But I have another method. If you have a Telegram installed, then you can get a lossless transfer to this computer. You got a bunch of lossless files. And there we go. This might take a little while, but the files are transferring. Now, of course, this isn't as convenient as AirDrop. And I don't actually know how much of a pain it is to get things from Android to Mac nowadays, but used to not be all that great, but mostly because of the ecosystem I'm operating in. So it is important that I remember this when we talk about this sort of thing. Okay, so on reflection, the day I spent with the Pixel 7 Pro was actually really enjoyable. And sure, while I am certainly more comfortable on iPhone and don't have any plans to switch, I've talked about that before. That said though, in my opinion, the Pixel 7 Pro really is the best of the best when it comes to Android. Like it's got a gorgeous design, awesome features, an incredible camera. And yeah, honestly, it was really nice to just for a change, check out 
out the best of the best when it comes to Android. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know, by the way, what do you think of the Pixel line? Do you like him? Do you not? Do you prefer a different Android phone altogether? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I always enjoy reading those. As for now, though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.